The old joke is there's nothing automatic about automation. When you're mixing a track, you're creating broad overall changes to that track. These are static choices that will remain the same throughout the mix. But there's times during a mix when these settings will need to change for whatever reason. Maybe the volume is too loud or it's not loud enough or a reverb setting or a delay setting isn't exactly what you need for a verse or for a chorus. The best analogy that I can give is when a guitar player hits his or her effects pedals right before a guitar solo so that it changes everything. The guitar will cut through the mix a lot easier. There's added delay, there's added treble. Again, so it cuts through the mix. It needs to be different because different is good. Static, undynamic mixes are boring and that is the mark of a beginner. Automation is what makes a good mix sound great. It is your chance as a mix engineer to, in a way, be a musician. You're orchestrating the mix elements into something even better than they already are. If you are new to mixing or have never dove into automation, here's how to do it. In the old days, a band plus an audio engineer and his or her assistant would stand around a mixing console and manually change settings while a mix was recorded to tape. Automation with motorized faders was eventually added as a major mix desk feature, and from then on, manual hands on deck weren't needed as much. I just said a very key point about automation, so write this down or keep it in your head. Automation is usually best done towards the end of a mix. There are two main ways to create automation data inside Digital Audio Workstation software. One is to add envelope points. If you're familiar with video editing, these are called keyframes. In Pro Tools, they're called breakpoints. First, you'll need to enable the automation lane so that you can add points. In Reaper, you do this by clicking the Trap Envelopes Automations button. On the menu that pops up, all available automatable parameters appear. As you mouse over the different parameters, you'll see that it highlights. You can click that highlighted area and it will make the automation lane visible and arm it by default. Click the envelope button again or just off of it to close the menu. After that, you can click and drag that envelope point to precisely adjust it. You can also widen the automation lane for even more precision. Usually the way that I do automation is to add four envelope points and then start editing. For example, in this section, I want to change the frequency response so that it is more present in the middle of this little phrase right here with the guitar. So here's what I'm gonna do. I just undid what I did. And I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I'll click here. All right, first I'll zoom in. So on this fourth note is where I want it to change. So I click once, then I click a little bit before it. Again, zooming in. Actually a little bit, well, nah, I'll do it a little bit before it. And then before I do any other editing, I'm gonna add two more points. And I'll do that right here after this dragged out note. All right. Now the next thing I wanna do, and I'm gonna show you this because the plugin itself will actually change so you can see what this happening in real time as I play the song. So right in the middle of the two middle points, I'm going to click and drag up. And what while I'm dragging up, you'll see in two spots, it'll show me what I'm doing. Let's do that. Okay, now look over on the left side. You see it's changing with decibels, and I'll bring it down. It's in the negatives now. All right. 
And then in the text that's on the, I guess, tan or peach colored background, it also tells me some other information. All right, I'll let go. Okay, so that's one way to do automation. Now I'm gonna play this so you can hear exactly what happens and watch the middle knob. See how that changed? I'll play it one more time right at that point so you can watch it again. Very cool, right? You couldn't possibly do that in real time. <laughs> Again, unless you had like 10 hands. So, that's automation in a nutshell. There's another way to add automation though. It's a little bit more fun than doing it that way. Because when you do it this way, it's a lot like how a live music mix engineer works. And if you have a hardware controller, that's where this comes into play. Here's how to do it in Reaper. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna clear this data actually, first of all. So what I'm gonna do is hit X, clear envelope, and then hit yes again. And this time I'm going to adjust, well, I'll do the same thing actually. So I'll go to envelope again and find my mid-range band. But this time I'm gonna look up here where it says trim read. And I have these options for my automation modes. So I'm gonna tell you what these all mean and then show you what they do. Read mode is probably the most obvious one. It's the one that's on by default and it's the one that you turn on after you're finished doing automation. In touch mode, your doll will only write automation when the fader is touched. Once you release it by releasing your mouse button, the automation returns to its old spot. All right, you ready? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna back this up a little bit and then I'm going to adjust this fader right here as the song plays. And then I'm gonna let go of my mouse button after it gets to around this point. Ready and go. All right, for some reason, I don't like what that did. So hold on, I'm gonna do this again. All right, so what's happening is because my screen capture software is delayed, it's actually, it was, it was doing something that I didn't want it to do. So let's actually play this and let's listen to what it did. All right. Well, I can visually see what happened. And luckily when I did press space, it stopped right where I wanted it to. But in a different mode where my buffer's lower, that shouldn't have happened. Anyway, you got to see what happened with that mode, so I'm gonna go on to the next one. I'm gonna clear this data like I just did before and get back to you when I'm ready. The next mode listed in Reaper is Latch Mode. The way Latch Mode works is that it writes automation data when the fader is touched, but when you release the control, it stays put or latches onto that setting. So let's see how this works. Hey. 
And one more time, I'm going to clear that data. I'm doing control Z to undo. Now let's see what happens if I were to play this back and will it move or won't it? Let's see. Okay, well there you go. Now what I'm gonna do is go back and look at the other mode Okay, so we're back in touch. And like I said, this mode will only write data and then as soon as I release the mouse button, it should stop writing. So let's try it. Okay, it did. As soon as I let it go, it stopped writing that data. If you watch, Watch my data point in the front as this plays. Cool. I'm going to clear that data as well and go to our final mode which is called write. Now this one is probably the best option to go with when you do your first pass of automation. So let's do it. So you may be wondering what is the difference between write and latch mode because they seem to be very similar. Again, let me put it back on latch mode so you can see. All right, now pay attention to the little animation when I click this button, okay? So I'm gonna start playing this. I'm not gonna click it immediately. I'm gonna click it somewhere around here. Just watch what happens as I play this. All right, that's the difference. In write mode, it overwrites the data prior to when I touch my mouse button. So until I touch this, it is just in read mode effectively. So again, that's why you wanna have write mode to begin with. And then, you know, after you make your little manual automation, you can put it back into trim read mode. And then if you need to make adjustments, which you probably will, you can go back and hold the shift button and adjust. Now that you know how to automate, the next question is, when should you automate? I tend to do volume automation on vocals first, before I even put plugins on. That's because every word in vocals needs to be heard, and compression oftentimes isn't enough. Then I do the rest of my automation last after a mix is nearly complete. Automation is the completion of a mix. Now is a good time to talk about pre-FX volume versus post-FX volume though, because there are options in Reaper. So let me clear this off. I really don't need to see this anymore. 
There is an option right here, even if you don't have plugins on, where it says volume, then you have volume pre-FX. The difference is, it's very simple. My volume will change before any of my plugins. And see how my waveforms are changing? All right. Now, the only problem with this is in Reaper, you're limited to six decibels. That's it. I used to use a plugin called Free G from Synalxis, which I do recommend. If all you need is a gain knob, use that. However, this plugin right here, Slick EQ, it's free. And as long as you turn off all these parameters, see, I had, I had them off before. So turn those off. And also turn off auto gain. There's an output gain that I can automate. So let me bring that up in the envelope points. And right down here, click that. Add my points, go up. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, the way Reaper works is sometimes you can't see how many decibels you're actually automating, but you really shouldn't pay attention to numbers anyway. You should just listen with your ears what you want to hear with your automation. So watch this number change as the automation plays right over here. Cool, right? Now that I've answered the when, the where is also important. Anytime you want to make an instrument louder or quieter, or there's parts of a mix where your instrument doesn't need to be thinned out because it's all by itself or with just a few other instruments. So like, let's say a, a, a verse as opposed to a course, you can make that instrument brighter or darker, have less cuts. You can do guitar tone changes. For example, if you have a guitar amp simulator like this one, your reverb settings could change between a chorus and a verse or a crescendo. You can bypass or enable different effects. You can mute an entire track. You can do panning automation. All of these things add dynamics to a mix and keep the ear interested in listening to the song. If you want to get some ideas for lead vocal reverb changes, I'll link to a video in the description. Mix engineers will often group instruments together so that volume automation is easier to do. These are also called track buses. These groupings usually include guitars, drums, background vocals, and keyboards. Some more examples of automation include Muting a send effect so that it only appears here and there. Automating a tempo sync delay send so that only the last word or two of a vocal phrase is audible. That's a very common trick in modern music. Your de-esser plugin may be taking your singer's front teeth out a little bit too much here and there so you can back off the threshold setting when necessary. That's also why I tend to do vocal automation first so that any plug-in down the line can be affected properly. Drum triggers may need threshold automation. Ghost notes are often a problem, or if a drummer starts playing side stick, you'll need to change the sample. Or you may want to change the drum trigger samples between the verses and courses. Reverb and delay volume changes during different sections. Remember, the more reverb or delay something has, the more it sounds like it's back in the mix. So if you lower the volume of a reverb, it'll sound more up front. The converse of that is if you raise the volume of the reverb, it'll sound more distant in the track. With equalizer automation, it really depends on the song. Like I said before, 
If you have a solo instrument, you're going to want it to sound a lot fuller and louder than it does when the rest of the instruments are playing. If you do bypass plugins with automation, be very mindful of clicking and popping. Try to set your automation to bypass at what is known as zero crossing points of audio. I'll show you that right here. If I zoom in here on the waveform very tightly. You see how, here I'll make this bigger. That's actually what you need to do anyway. So, all right, so if I were to make an automation point, the exact point where this crosses that middle part of the track, that point right there, I can't zoom in any further. That's where I would make my automation point for a bypass because that's the point where it is zeroed. That's why it's called the zero crossing point. And that's why they even have that line right there for you. A lot of people don't know that. Why is that line there? That's why it's the zero crossing point. If clicking or popping still occurs, then you may need to just set up a brand new track and then place your plugin changes on that track, unfortunately. You can also automate during mastering. A decibel or two volume dynamics during a song really makes it come alive. And that's something you gotta remember. Subtle automation moves oftentimes can be the key to a better mix. Listen for the different automation in mainstream music. Two engineers that I'll suggest looking up are Jakir King and Jason Joshua. Those guys do some crazy stuff with automation. They are seriously scientists when it comes to this stuff. And I'm gonna give credit to the Recording Revolution blog for this tip. Again, Go ahead and steal some ideas from other music and incorporate that extra touch of professionalism into your future mixes. Do not be lazy about automation. It's possible that it takes many more hours to do properly, depending on the complexity of your mix. And if you're brand new to automation, it's definitely going to take longer than if you've been doing it for a while. Just remember though, Automation is really what separates professionals from amateurs. I will be the first one to tell you I didn't used to do it in my old mixes. That's why a lot of them sound boring. And to be honest with you, I need to do it more because I really don't do it like I should. The one thing I got to say, though, just to wrap this video up is your arrangement affects your automation. So if you have a track that is very undynamic from front to back, it's not easy to do automation. There is really no dynamics to the song. That's why I kind of had to remake one of the songs that I recorded because it was very boring. Everything was going at 100% from the very beginning. You need to limit the amount of instrumentation that's going on during verses versus courses, and then you also need to make changes here and there. I can't stress this enough how important arrangement is to making a good mix. And a lot of times that's out of your hands, but you can try your best to do what you can with the material that you have. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.